We get lots of inquiries and questions in the comments about what a security guard can actually do if they suspect you of shoplifting and understandably getting upset when they're trying to search your bags and detain you until the police arrive and these sort of things. Well, the situation is a little bit complicated, so I'm going to help to demystify it for you right now. Now, the starting point is that security guards do not have any special powers over and above that that any other member of the public does. Certainly not like the police, where they have a power of arrest. The power of arrest is different from exercising what is commonly referred to as a citizen's arrest. Now, the citizen's arrest, as it is usually referred to, is actually arrest without a warrant by other persons. So anyone other than a constable, constable being a police officer. This is derived under Section 24A of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act of 1984. But let's just start right back at the beginning. If a security officer suspects you of shoplifting, now that is obviously an offence of dishonesty, it's an offence under the Theft Act, it's an either way offence, meaning it could be tried at the Magistrates Court or it could be tried at the Crown Court. That will become important a little bit later on. Now they might suspect that you've already committed the offence, i.e. you are outside the store having paid but you still have the goods with you, or they might suspect that you are in the process of committing that offence. And that could really be anywhere from putting the thing in your pocket whilst you're in the supermarket to going through the checkouts and they can see that it's still in your pocket and you'll look like you've got no intention to pay for it. So if it looks to the security officer and they have reasonable ground to suspect that you are in the process of committing this offence, which remember is indictable, that is when they might step in to try to search your bag and they might try to detain you. Now, let's look at the section in question that I referred to, which reads that any person other than a constable may arrest without a warrant anyone who is in the act of committing an indictable offence, anyone whom he has reasonable grounds for suspecting to be committing an indictable offence. So the slight distinction between the two there, in 1A, they are in the act of committing an indictable offence, and 1B, that they have a reasonable ground for suspecting to be committing an indictable offence. Now an indictable offence, as I said earlier, is an offence which can be tried on indictment, meaning it can go to the Crown Court for determination. Theft is an either way offence, meaning it could be tried at the Magistrates Court, but need not be tried if it is an indictable offence, meaning if it's either way, it could be tried on indictment or it could be kept at the Magistrates Court. There is a very slight oddity with low level shoplifting, and that is taken to be the taking of goods which have a value of £200 or less. Low value shoplifting is designed to be kept in the Magistrates Court so it's ordinarily tried summarily at the Magistrates Court. However, the defendant still has the option to elect a Crown Court trial, meaning it still can go to the Crown Court. Now this is perhaps where a lot of the confusion comes from because this low level shoplifting valued under 200 pounds is under the Antisocial Behaviour Crime and Policing Act of 2014, which changed the landscape a little bit because there were frankly so many low level shoplifting cases that they decided to try to keep them at the Magistrates Court if possible. Although because it's an offence of dishonesty and and can have serious repercussions on your record, defendants can elect Crown Court trial. If a person is caught shoplifting, usually by the security guard, i.e. that the security guard believes or has reasonable grounds to suspect that the person is in the act of committing the offence, then they can make a citizen's arrest as it's commonly known under the act that I've mentioned. It must also be the case, as is fairly usual, that it's not reasonably practical for a police officer to make the arrest instead. In other words, if there was a police officer there, then they wouldn't be doing it. But in the absence of the police officer, the security guard can indeed exercise this uh, citizen's arrest. If the person doing the shoplifting attempts to run away before the police officer gets there, it's a common misconception that the security guard cannot do anything to detain the person. Security guards are permitted to use reasonable force to detain shoplifters to await for the police to arrive. This is derived from the Criminal Law Act of 1967. And ultimately, anyone that is caught shoplifting is likely to be uh, prosecuted because shops like to stamp out shoplifting. 
This low level shoplifting does then kick in because if the goods are worth less than £200, the maximum is six months custody. However, if the goods are worth more than £200, the maximum is up to seven years. And then the court will determine all such things such as the culpability, the amount, the planning, the cunning and all that sort of stuff to determine what sentence is appropriate. So then we come back to determine if all of this was legal, you need to determine what the suspicion was in the first place. This is a bit of common sense. If the security guard sees you putting things into your coat pocket or something like that, not into a bag that you're then taking to the checkout, or you're just concealing it in some other way, and this could be seen remotely, it could be seen in person, or it could be reported to them by another shopper or another member of staff. The big question, however, in many inquiries and in the comment section, is does a security officer have the power to search your bag? And the simple answer is no. A security officer does not have the power to search you or your bag, at least not without your permission. However, common sense should prevail that if you refuse to allow this search of your person or your bag, this might give the security officer just enough suspicion to exercise a citizen's arrest because they have reasonable grounds to suspect that you either have or you're in the process of committing the offence of shoplifting. That doesn't mean, however, they can go on to search you. It just means that they detain you and they must bring you to a police officer or call the police officer to come to you and the police officer is likely to search you. What I would recommend in these situations, although many people will not be happy with it, is just to allow the security guard to look into your shopping bags. They can determine that you don't have any goods with you, that you haven't paid for, you can produce Use the receipt showing that you have paid for the items that are in your bag and if you really object to the security officer from searching you and your coat and your pockets and things like that then of course you can voluntarily wait for the police officer to come and then you can then allow the police officer to search you if you don't allow the police officer to search you and they form the same suspicion they may forcibly search you because the police do have these powers. And then all of the procedure for a search will kick in, which I've covered in another video. So that's the summary overall. A security guard can detain you if you are in the act of committing an indictable offence, such as theft, or they have reasonable grounds for suspecting that you are committing this offence. And as I say, reasonable grounds might just be that you've refused a search and you are in a position where it's quite likely that you've got goods with you, that you may not have paid for. So I hope that's helpful. Please do like the video and subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching.